that you are spiritual votes and your sole purpose. God said, I'm going to secure you. He says, there's something that I place in you that is valuable. And he says, I'm going to secure your end. He said, I'm going to secure everything that you placed in me. Votes have a level of security that protects against unauthorized access. Let me say that again. Votes have a level of security. Stay with me. Are you with me, church? Are you with me? Are you with me? And yeah. you will help me with my time also, right? Yeah. Votes. You will help me with my time. Votes have a level of security that protects against unauthorized access or damage. Whatever the damage is, whatever the unauthorized access is, God says there's a release and there's a new rainbow. There's a new mantle that he's releasing as you pray. Someone say pray. Someone say prayer. prayer. Prayer because when you think about a vote, it locks everything what? In. It locks everything what? In. And the only person that can get in is the person that has the correct combination. A vote is a wall-mounted unit. So it's a wall-mounted unit that cannot be moved from one location to the next. It cannot be what? Moved. So Ezekiel 3, 17 through 19 says, Serving man, I have made thee a watchman on the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. He says, listen, when you're talking about a watchman, a watchman will check the doors, check the windows, check the lock, check the basement, check the entrance of a building. A lockman will make sure everything is secured. A lockman will make sure nothing deters, nothing comes in unauthorized, that it's not supposed to. A lockman, listen, a lockman, well, a watchman, they investigate conditions, disturbances. A watchman, which is also to me, a locksmith, they investigate because a locksmith opens and closes. Watchmen are the only one that is able to open and close. God said, I set you to be a watchman over your household, over this nation. So that means anything that's coming in, your house will be exempt. Anything that's going to take place at the job, you will be exempt. Anything that's coming up against your children, they will be exempt. So they check conditions. Someone say check the condition. So God has designed you and me to be mounted. Someone say stay mounted. I gotta stay mounted. I'm gonna to wanna to move, and God is saying, No, stay mounted. I'm gonna to wanna to seek somewhere else, and God is saying, Stay what? Mounted. God tells him, I want you to go to Jerusalem and mount yourself in an upper room. He says, I want you to get on a wall, and I want you to stay there, and you will know when to come off because the promise has come. So until the promise comes, you got to stay mounted. Someone say stay mounted. You and I got to stay mounted against peril. Jesus knew that the God of this world, the Bible says he has blinded the eyes of the children of disobedience. Somebody say I'm a boat. Someone say I am a boat. If you don't remember nothing else, boats are locked in. There are certain things that I will not allow to ever come in and evade me again. There are certain things that I knew that I was weak to in the past. Come on, church. I will never allow that thing to enter in me again. I understand when deliverance comes, we have to make sure maintain our deliverance. And no one can do it except for who, church? And no one can do it except for who, church? to stay mounted against peril. Why? Because we understand the upper room experience requires that you be elevated. Come on, church. Stay with me. I'm almost done. It requires that we be what? Elevated. A base vault is different from a vaulted ceiling. We have to move from the base place to a vaulted capacity in our spirit man. In other words, we can't just remain at the ankle. I hear you, Holy Ghost. The Bible tells me uh, in the book of Ezekiel about the 42nd chapter that he's speaking to Ezekiel. He said there's waters that's going to be released out of you. And he said there's going to be some waters that will come to your ankle. He said, but you can't stay there. He says waters to your knees. He says waters to your loins. He says then there's going to be a water that you can only swim in. Someone say revelation. There's a growth in God. There's a command that God says you and I must come up higher. Someone say higher. Someone say higher. You have base votes and then you have votes, vaulted ceiling. God said, I want to remove the ceiling off of any and everything that has ever captivated, that has ever kept you. I decree and I declare the ceiling has been ripped off. I decree and I declare everything that was 
removed. Someone say remove. We move from levels to dimensions. Stay with me. Someone say remove. Someone say remove. We move from levels to dimension to transfiguration. If you get it sleep, you need to stand up in the name of Jesus. Because I told you when it comes to prayer, the first thing the enemy does want to put us to. We move from levels to dimensions to transfigure. God said, said in the vault that there's going to be a transfiguration process. That you will not be the same when you are locked in with the Holy Spirit. There has to be a transformation process. Your, your, the glory on you differs. The, the, the grace on you differs. And then not only that, you have power to disarm an arm. Because your arm, you have power to disarm. In the name of Jesus, somebody say, stay mounted. Somebody say, stay mounted. First Peter 5 and 8 says that there's an enemy seeking who we may what church devour so I must say mountain what I love is may devour that means that I have the condition to make sure that he does not break in I have the condition and the power to make sure that he does not access someone say may it's conditional it's what it's what are you with me it's what it's what that means that's why I love sometimes when I get some crazy dreams. When you get a dream, and I've said it before, and in the dream there's some things that you're like, God, I don't want to say. When you are mountain, you get up and you reverse. When you are at a base place, you can't change anything. But when you are mountain in prayer, come on. When you are mountain in your word, when you are mountain in faith, you are able to get up. Okay, maybe the enemy doesn't bother you in your dream. Does anybody have the enemy bother them in dreams? And you gotta make, is it only me? And you gotta, is it only me? Okay, it's only me. It's only me and prophetess? Okay, it's only me. And you gotta stay what? Mountain. See, you can go to somewhere else, but when you stay mountain like you did in the AMs, then all of a sudden you have an experience that transfigured you. When your figure is changed, and the enemy doesn't even know who you are anymore. And the enemy You really take time with it. Um, 
you safeguard it. You don't handle it any kind of. When it's precious, you make time. You take time to review it. You look over it. You make sure that there's nothing that is happening to it. Someone say precious. God said, because you are precious in his sight. He says, don't you understand that I'll watch all my word to perform it. He said, don't you understand that everything about you is yea and amen. He says, don't you understand that even the time when you didn't even feel like you were worthy, worthy of it. He said, I knew that you were worthy of it. He said, that's why I sent my only begotten son. He said, but I need you to understand that you've got to stay mounted in this time, in this season that's coming away where everyone is going to fall away but you've got to make sure fall on your face don't fall away but fall on your face don't fall away but fall on your face because that which is in you is precious yes. someone say stay mounted I'm almost done give me 10 more minutes I think you're getting something from this Amen. you are a vault to Sabrina when you stay locked in you will find that you're going to flow even more in the prophetic. When you stay locked in, you'll flow, you'll flow more in the apostolic. What's the prophetic? The word. What's the apostolic? The word. That means he will tell you, your spirit man will guide you. And then all of a sudden he'll tell you what to go look up. He'll tell you what to position and how to position yourself. And then he'll tell you a test is coming. But I don't want you to be nervous or afraid because, number three, you stay mounted because of your position. You stay mounted, number one, because of peril. You stay mounted because it's precious. What God has on the inside of you, listen, you are precious. You are royalty. You are holy nation. He says, stay mounted because of your position. He says, don't shift your position. He says, don't change your position. He says, even when it feels as if it's not going to happen, he says, stay in the position. I hear my spirit gridlock. My God. I decree and I declare everything that God has for you, that, that the enemy will not be able to touch it. And I, I speak a gridlock. I speak gridlock in the name of Jesus. Everything that you are believing God for, everything that you are placed before him, everything that you are laying before him in this month of prayer, I heard in my spirit gridlock a moment ago. And so now God in the name of Jesus, as you drop this in my spirit, now God in the name of Jesus, let it be manifested. I decree and declare that you will not be on earth or on move. I decree and declare that the wind won't move. You won't chase after anything, but everything is gridlock in the name of Jesus. I decree that your mind and your spirit, what was impacting you because of what took place if the enemy had an access code, I decree that I declare the code, the prayer code just rewrote everything in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that I declare everything is on grid. Where are you? Stay mounted and position. Stay mounted and what? Position. Thank you, Lord. Stay mounted in what? Position. So all of a sudden he says, I want you to go to the upper room. And he says, listen, I want you to mount yourself. And I want you to stay there. He says, you want to mount yourself because there's an enemy that will come. And you got to know the truth of a lie. He says, I want you to mount yourself because you have to understand that what I'm releasing into you is precious. There's going to be time when you won't, you know, the church is going to suffer a loss. But I want you to know that what's in you will never be lost. I want you to know that I'm going to keep and sustain what's on the inside of you. And you're going to bring back what was lost. You will not suffer what the enemy thought. Then he says, I want you to be in position. Where are you? You are in head territory. So he tells him, I want you to shift your prayer altar. Whenever we shift and when we're praying, we pray up. And we don't pray down. Your prayer ascends and it never what descends. Your prayer moves. We sing the song, he moves mountain. He calls walls to what church falls. With all power, with all power, your, your prayer 
take your position in him. That's why the demon was able to say, Wait a minute, Paul, I know. In Acts chapter 19, thank you, Holy Ghost. Um, Paul, I know. I, Acts chapter 19, uh, from 11 to 17. He, the, the, the spirit looks, the spirit looks. When you and I pray, we understand in the, in the spirit realm, uh, the spirit realm is always moving. It moves by its feet of Things move up quickly. The moment you open your mouth and you say something, it's already done. The Bible tells us that Daniel had to pray and wrestle for 21 days because the prince of the what region. Why do you have to stay locked in? Because there's a prince of the what region that wants to make sure you don't stay gridlocked. But when you and I stay locked into what God has said, it doesn't matter. That thing must come to what pass. It must come to what fruition. You are in head territory. You are leading. Amen. And your prayer life causes a birthing shift. Let me say that again. Your prayer life because of the position when a woman is given birth, she doesn't just get into any, any kind of position. She gets in the position to birth. And so what God is doing, I'm going to birth the church in what prayer? I'm not going to birth the church in, 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 in giving because that's going to come after. I'm not going to birth the church in tongues. That's going to come after. When the prayer is released and the atmosphere is set, then the tongues will come forth. So I don't need somebody to make tongues. God will release divine tongues, divine revelation. Oh, Lord, help me up in here. Your prayer life causes a birthing ship. Your prayer life opens your birthing canal. If you want to say shut, don't pray much. Oh, my God. And then we'll be doing that work to some people because they pray. And when they pray, they get through it. God says, no, I want you to be the conduit. I want you to be the circuit. I want you to be the channel. I want you to be the channel. I want you to be the spot, the place. So he said, I'm going to now energize you. And I'm going to give you the anointing. I'm going to shift your birthing position. I'm gonna, you're going to birth out nations. You're going to birth out people who are um, shifted. You are going to birth out people with mental issues. I decree, honey, that where you work at, the anointing upon you, God will begin to use you even more. I know you got to use wisdom because where we work, but God will begin to use you to be a man that will birth, a man that will draw in the name of Jesus, that you will see the lame, you will see the sick, as you believe God, that that miracle working power will be activated in you, as you are in the place of an upper room, who am I talking to in the name of Jesus, there's a birthing, there's a birthing, there's a birthing in this house, there is a birthing, there's a birthing in the spirit realm, there's a birthing in the name of Jesus Christ, there's a birthing, there's a birthing in the name of Jesus, because God said, I want to birth out something new. He says, I, I know what you have in you, you think is enough. He says, but it's not enough for you to do what I'm calling you to do. He says, I want to birth what you've never tasted before. He said, I want to birth what you've never experienced before. This baby will be like no other. This baby will have different toes and different eyes and different face. This baby will have a different body. This baby will have a different this baby will sound like no one else, will be like no one else, will operate like no one else. This baby has never been seen. I won't say position. 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 So stay mounted and in position. And the last one, why we understand that we are locked in. I see it, Lord. We are locked in because God says, Oh my God, we dropped in my spirit. He says, you learn the right combination from lock, block to open. He says, you learn the right combination from lock to it being block to it now being what open. They're locked in. The last point, there's so much more, but I'll stop here. He says, daughter, when they were there in the place, have you ever prayed in? You still felt like something was locked? Have you ever prayed and you're like, okay, I'm praying, but I don't sense anything what moving. You feel like something is restricted. So they're there, Sister Christina, and they're praying, but something is still what? Locked. They're praying and 
praying. Have you ever been praying? And when you come out of the place, you say, Lord, ain't nothing happening. You say, God, wait a minute. I spent time in prayer, and I still don't see such and such taking place. So the Lord said to me this morning, he said, Lord, you learn the right combination from locked to block to open. And it's simply our posture. The disciples are in the upper room, locked in. Someone say locked in. What are you gonna say, church? Locked in. What are you gonna say, church? Locked in. What are you gonna say, church? Locked in. If you don't remember nothing else, simple teaching. 